Welcome with me, Pastor Tani Bero and Jane. Today we are going to continue um, on running to win, the attitude of a winner. And I just want to start by recapping very shortly what we did last week. Um, we talked about once again having an attitude of a winner. And 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24 says, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs? So everybody runs. We are all in the race. He says, but only one person gets the prize. So it's not just about being in the race. It's got to do with how you run. He says, so run to win. So your goal is to win. You were born a winner. And we looked at it last week. You know, amongst the millions and millions of swimmers, you came first, right? We're talking about conception, which means scientifically spoken, you are one in a million. It's not a lie. So God has destined you. And now in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. So while in your mother's womb, God says, I formed you, I knew you, which means God has got an assignment for your life. So you were born a winner. Now getting into this race, run like a winner, like the attitude uh, of a champion. So he says in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, run in such a way that you may obtain it. So run to win. So how do we run? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 26 says, therefore I run this, not with uncertainty. So not faithless, not I'm not sure, not I don't know, you know, not with uncertainty, but knowing that you will win. When champions are interviewed, even if they did win, you know, their attitude is like this. They say, well, I could have done better. So this is the attitude that we run with. We run and that is the sign of a winner where we come and say, you know, I could have done better. I'm going to do this again. And it's not, well, I must just do it and I must just do what I need to do. You know, it's my job. No, that's not the attitude of a winner. So it is not with uncertainty that you and I run. But in Philippians 4 verse 13, it says, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. So we know we can do all things. We know we can do this. Amen. So it's not, well, I'm not good enough and I don't have what it takes. But rather, no, you have a raw uh, uh, faith in the potential that God has placed with you on the inside. So you're not putting yourself down. Never allow excuses to define you. You are not a person of excuses. You're a winner. So you are here to beat the excuses. That's why you are here. So when people come and say uh, they have excuses, you say, hang on, that's why I'm there. You know, well, I can't do it. Why? One, two, three, four. Well, that's why I'm here, right? I'm here to conquer those excuses within my life. So that's why the Bible says in Luke chapter 137, for with God, nothing will be impossible. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 26, so I run with purpose in every step. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air. So I'm not just using all my energy for nothing. No, I am accurate as a child of God. I'm accurate concerning the things I need to do. I'm accurate concerning my Christian disciplines. And in 1 Corinthians 9 27, he comes and he says, I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should and this is what I, what I want to talk to you about today I uh, I discipline my body like an athlete training it to do what it should do not what it wants to do training it to do what it should so when we look at an athlete's life we see that athletes are disciplined and then they train why because they want to win so the athletes everything that they do even the 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 diet you know they, they eat to run they don't eat to eat they don't breathe air to breathe air there is purpose in everything that they do so you don't get up in the morning just to get up you get up in the morning with purpose so an athlete disciplines their body therefore they don't eat to eat they eat to run but they run to win which means they eat to win so what you give your attention to spiritually you eat to win what you hear you hear to win what you watch you watch to win what are you listening to on your way to work what are you watching within your life so 1 corinthians 9 27 says i discipline my body so we need spiritual discipline and that is why we are uh, in this time of fasting and prayer this 21 days that we can form a lifestyle 
We are not fasting because it's a spiritual thing to do. We don't pray because it's a spiritual thing to do. We are getting to that place where we want it to be our lifestyle, where we fast and pray because we need God within our lives to fulfill the original purpose of God within our lives. So and th that's why we looked at Acts chapter 2 verse 42. And they continued steadfastly. So every single day they continued steadfastly. Uh, this was the disciplines within their lives as to what they needed to do. And this should be the disciplines in our lives, the four pillars. You know, and what did they um, continue steadfastly in? In the apostles' doctrine, in the fellowship, in the breaking of bread, in prayers. This is the four pillars of every Christian's life. If one of those pillars are not there, you will struggle in your Christian life. So, first of all, the apostles' doctrine. Where you receive the word from the apostle, the saint one in your life, your pastor, your senior pastor, your immediate pastor, your leader. Those who are sent into your life to preach the word. Well, it's me and Jesus and I can read the Bible for myself. No, that is not biblical. Because you interpret the Bible at the level where you are at. So from that level, it means you never grow. You never develop. Because you are at that level and you are interpreting the Bible at that level from your need. So therefore, we need the Apostles' Doctrine that when the word is spoken, we can interpret it within our lives. And as the Apostle speaks it, your pastor, whoever God has sent, as they speak it into your life, what happens now? Now you interpret it like a coach. That's why athletes have coaches. So uh, don't miss a Sunday service. Um, don't miss church where you don't get what you want, but you get what you need, not what you think you need. So that is what God knows that you need. So don't miss the word for the week. Don't miss your meal. Make sure that you are getting what God wants you to get. And then secondly, fellowship. Hang around people that challenge you where you are at. Hang around people that make you feel uncomfortable. This, oh my um, BFF, you know, it's my best friend for life. And oh, they just accept me the way I am. I don't want friends like that who just accept me the way I am. I want friends who challenges me. That helps me to go to the next level. Because now what happens is now you you get into a hole. You drag other people, your best friend that just accepts you, who you are into that hole. And you dig that hole deeper for yourselves. And now you become depressed and you blame everybody else. Now you are two or three friends. And now what happens? They blame your, uh, your problem for your marriage on everybody else. You're blaming your problem for, for whatever, for your pastor, your leaders. You start blaming others for where you are at. And what happens? Now they agree to blame the people you blame. And you blame to agree the people they blame. And it's a whole conspiracy. Don't be stupid. Don't hang around people that will leave you the way you are. Hang around people that will challenge you. That, that's why, you know, hang around people that say, why aren't you in church? Why aren't you in cell? Why aren't you doing your devotion? Why aren't you doing what you're supposed to be doing with your life? Don't hang around backslidden people. Don't hang around the wrong people. You become who you hang out with. You show me your friends and I'll show you where you are going in your life. So thirdly, the third pillar is the breaking of bread. The communion table. Having communion once a month at church, but you can have it more often in your home as well. This has got to do with the cross, with the blood of Jesus, the foundation of Christianity. This is the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore you need, first of all, the apostles' doctrine to lift you up out of that hole where you sometimes hear the things you don't want to hear, but it challenges you and you start doing it and you get out of the hole and you can start living that higher life. And then you get into your, your cell group, your fellowship group, which normally discuss Sunday sermons to continue to help you get out of that hole, right? You hang around people that challenge you. Say, hey, you've got to do your devotion. You've got to do this. You hang around them, right? And then thirdly, you need to understand the blood of Jesus. Having communion. The power that is in the blood of Jesus. Therefore, every day in your prayer, make the confessions of the blood of Jesus. Just where you are, say it with me. By the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed from the power of the enemy. Say with me. By the blood of Jesus, I am forgiven of all my sin. Say with me. By the blood of Jesus, I am cleansed now 
and continually from all my sin. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I am justified. And God sees me just as if I've never sinned. Say with me, by the blood of Jesus, I'm sanctified, set apart for God's purpose. So once again, we get together and we partake of communion. We partake and we establish our identity in Jesus Christ and the power and the dominion of God within our lives. And then the last pillar is the one of prayer. So once again, that's why we're fasting and praying. In your personal life, you need to have a devotional life of prayer. Prayer is communicating with God. You've got to learn how to pray. It is extremely important within your life. In Mark chapter 135, before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went out to an isolated place to pray. So when did Jesus pray? Early in the morning. And so that's why the Lord's Prayer says, uh, it's a daily prayer. It says, give us this day our daily bread. It's not a weekly prayer. It's not a monthly prayer. You don't buy your groceries and then you pray over them. You pray over every meal, every day. It's a continual praying. We are thankful. Every meal we have, we pray. And we say thank you. So once again, when we pray, early in the morning, Jesus got up. What did Jesus do? He got up. What did Jesus do? He got up. So you don't lie in your bed and pray. You get up early in the morning. You wash your face, brush your teeth, get yourself ready. Be awake for your appointment with God. And Mark 1 35, once again, it says Jesus got up and went out an isolated place to pray. So I went to a solitary place to pray. A place where people can't bug you, in other words, uh, where they can't take away your attention, a place where you can concentrate and focus on your prayer, on your communication with Jesus, where you can get away from people that are texting you and WhatsApping you and calling you, getting away from the dogs and the children and whatever. A solitary place, an isolated place, and there he prayed. Don't come and tell me, well, Pastor, I'm a mother and I'm so busy, you know. I don't get time, so then I pray, you know, while I'm doing the dishes and while I'm vacuuming. I'm also a wife and a mother and a pastor and a, and a housewife, you know. I also clean my own house. I don't have anyone helping me. But let me tell you, I need to have my time early in the morning with God because it sets up my whole day. It establishes the, the dominion of God within my life so don't use that as an excuse because God is your balance then it means you need to change your priorities and put God first so Mark 1 37 to 38 so when they found him they said everyone is looking for you but Jesus replied now listen to me this is what happens when you pray it says Jesus replied we must go on to other towns as well and I will preach to them too that is why I came so what did Jesus do? He said, we must go. They said, everybody's looking for you. Jesus said, you know what? I must go. <laughs> Why? Because in his prayer, what happened? What are you doing? You are recalibrating the purpose of God within your life for what you need to do for that day. So that's what... Uh, you, why you need to pray. So he's, they said to him, everyone is looking for you. Now, did Jesus remont, uh, respond to that statement? No, he didn't respond. You know, everybody, oh, we need to love because everyone is looking for us. No, Jesus came and, you know, when you pray, what happens is you are not a reactor. You're not a reactor to circumstances. You don't react to the whims of what everybody says. Everybody's looking for you. You must you must, you must. See, you must have purpose established within your life. That is what you must have. The masses don't determine where you are going. I don't do this because everybody else says I must do this. I don't go because everybody else says I must go. No, I go because God has ordained me. I have purpose. So I just don't just go with everybody because then you will not have balance or time in your life so he says everybody is looking he doesn't even answer to everybody right what does he say so i must go to another town he doesn't even respond why because he prayed he's got purpose he's got direction he's got vision he knows why he's alive and that's why we pray people that's why we have to pray and you know why you are overwhelmed you know why you are stressed out because of everyone <laughs> because you have in your life people that shouldn't be in your life no, I respond to the, to the goal of God, to the purpose of God. Lord, this is what you ordained for me for this day. So why do we fast? We fast because we need God. 
Fasting helps you to draw closer to God. It helps you to draw us away from the desires that satisfy our own lust and materialism because we, we, we come and we, uh, for a, these days that we're fasting, we are coming and we're drawing ourselves away from the worldly things and we're focusing on God. So say with me, food, you are not the boss of me. <laughs> say with me, stuff, you are not the boss of me. So you're not get, going to make me feel bad or good. I decide whether I'm going to feel bad or good. So when you have money, you are happy. And when you don't have money, you're sad. What rubbish is that? We know that God is in control of our lives. Amen. That's why fasting brings you to that place where you realize that you are dependent on God. Therefore, when you fast and pray, what we are fasting and praying with a purpose. And this is why I recorded the videos for you. And I will still record more on prayer itself. You need to pray accurately. We don't pray prayers where we're begging without faith. We need to pray prayers of faith and we need to be accurate in our prayers. And then we recalibrate our lives with God and then our purpose is established for the day. And that's why Acts 14 verse 23 says, So when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting. So you see prayer and fasting goes hand in hand. Uh, Matthew 6 verse 16, Moreover, when you fast, Jesus is saying not if you, but when you fast. So we've got to get to that place of trust and faith within our lives where we actually fast and I've seen it in my own life the more your faith increase the more you understand fasting and prayer the more you fast and pray the more your faith increase and you realize you can't go on without this this fasting and prayer is a seeking after the heart of God so that's why the next two weeks we are continuing in our fasting and prayer we have already done one week so join us in our prayer meetings if you have at 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock at night at church. And we are going to have an anointing service and anoint your family. Then on the 28th of the last day for fasting and prayer for your assignment. So say with me, I have an assignment. I'm not just here, right? So we are going to anoint you for your assignment. Your assignment is not just to survive. You've got purpose in your life. God wants you to be an influencer. He wants you to be a world changer, a history maker. God has got an assignment for your life. But see, when you pray over that time, and, and when you pray, and when we pray over you, we can do it after a period of fasting and prayer. So uh, I want to encourage you, if you haven't started yet, start. How do you want us to anoint you but you haven't even gone through the trouble of seeking the dominion and kingdom of God in your life for yourself by praying and fasting so start praying and fasting and on my videos there are everything you need to know about it so some do a full fast I'm not going to tell you how to fast where they just fast on water some do liquid fast on just fresh fruit and vegetables that are liquid dyes Others do the Daniel fast where you eat free, fr fresh fruit and vegetables. And uh, some eat uh, one meal a day, others eat two meals a day. But when you eat, don't eat luxury food. It is just fruit and vegetables, no steaks, no meat, no coffee, no such things. Otherwise, you break the fast. So you don't, uh, you know where you are at. You know your energy. You, you know what you need at your job, the requirements. You know where you are at, but you can fast. Uh, as you grow in your relationship, you will clearly sense the Holy Spirit say to you, you know what, I want you to go on a water fast now, or you need to go on that fast. As you grow, it develops. You, you, and you learn to understand the more you do it, to understand better and have spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding. But take the time. Don't think, well, I'm going to fast just for one day. No. No, take the 14 days. Take the 21 days. Get into that happen. And when you fast a meal, you know. You don't have social time. That time you get into the Word of God. That time you get into prayer. Take the notes that you have made on prayer, on how to pray, which I've shared with you, and keep it by your side. When your, uh, your mind wants to wander, you look at that again so that you can stay focused and purpose in your prayer, praying unto God. Where you come and say, Lord, I need you in my life. I want to be accurate concerning my assignment that you have for me. Say with me, I discipline my body. Say with me again, I discipline my body and teach it what it should do, not what it wants to do. Amen. Let me just do a prayer with you. Lord, for 2024, I commit myself. Come on, say this with me. Pray this with me. Lord, for 2024, I commit myself for your assignment on my life and on my children's life. Thank you, Lord. I'm called. 
I am a champion. I am a winner. I thank you, Lord. You help me to run to win, to run like a champion. Help me, Lord, to discipline my body. Bring it into subjection for your assignment on my life, your assignment on my family in this time. Help me, Lord, to be effective in this time of fasting and prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to encourage you once again. For those in our congregation, every evening we come together for that hour to fast or to pray because I want to help you in that to um, get your discipline, your Christian discipline going and to get you in that routine. So come and we teach you. If you don't know how to pray, you're going to be taught how to pray so that you can have that relationship with God. And um, if you can't come, for those of you that are maybe far away, go on my YouTube channel. And I have um, made a couple of videos in the beginning of this year on fasting. Three videos on fasting and then after that a couple on prayer. Go watch those videos. Go remind your, renew your mind about prayer that that desire to pray comes within your life and make the notes and start doing it and build that relationship don't make new year's resolutions rather start with new christian disciplines that maybe you have never done before in your life and now this year you start doing it and if you listen to the word that i shared you will have the know-hows you will be accurate you will know what to do when to do how to do it there will not be uncertainty and it will bring purpose in your life and in your walk with Christ. Amen. So be blessed as you are doing your Christian discipline, and as you're fasting and praying, we're praying for you. And I trust and I know God is going to do a great work within your life and in your family. God bless you.